What's up guys, Paul Salmon here. I'm going to show you a really unusual cause for an oil leak uh, in an R44. It's actually an unusual cause for an oil leak in most any aircraft that uh, Lycoming engines are used in. But uh, this, is a, this is an unusual one. Uh, this is one of those oil leaks that just can drive you nuts figuring out where it's coming from. So if you guys are staying tuned, let's take a look at the video. All right, so the crankshaft is hollow and oil flows through the middle of the crankshaft but to keep it from flowing out the end they put a plug in there and occasionally the plug leaks so here is a new plug yep. this one you can see has been leaking yeah, it's not good. very dimpled they normally have a little more of a a dent in them because that this will slide right in there and then you you hammer it in place with a, a drift and it swells it out up. yeah so to get this one out I drilled the hole, tapped it, and um, I'm gonna hopefully take my hammer and, and pop it out of there. Let's try to go this way. Yep, there it is. There you go. There's the oil. <laughs> so when I uh, pulled the lower sheave off, it was full of oil. The sheave, this area here, is all full of oil. Yeah. So. That's how you that was the hint. That was the hint, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So now yeah. I'll clean that up real good. I'll take my new one and put a little bit of sealer around the edge of it mm -hmm. and then hammer it in place. Okay. And seal it up. So there's a tube down inside the uh, crankshaft. You can see it's got a hole in it. It uses oil pressure to change the pitch of a constant speed prop. On this aircraft, obviously it has no constant speed prop. So they put the plug there in place. But the crankshaft could be used in different applications. On uh, the Lycoming 0320s, there was an AD that came out where you had to look inside the, uh, you had to pull that plug out and look inside the crankshaft for corrosion. That's the first time I ever pulled one of the plugs out. Um, on this engine, you know, there's not much sludge, there's no corrosion because the oil flows through there. On some of the other applications, it didn't, the oil didn't flow inside the crankshaft. So that space in there was um, susceptible to condensation and, and would start corrosion. And I got it all cleaned up there, all the residual sealant, everything off of that, where the plug is gonna ride. So now it's time to put the, the uh, plug back in. That's like precision work here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep getting that stuff all over you. <laughs> all right well there you have it a very unusual cause for an oil leak in an r44 the hint on this one is if you had a bunch of oil on the back side of the sheave all right so another common cause uh, for an oil leak in an r44 is the rear crank uh, shaft seal it will leak However, it won't put a bunch of oil on the back side of the sheave. Typically, if it's the, the uh, rear crankshaft seal or the crankshaft seal, it drops oil down straight down onto the top of the muffler shroud and then it, it drips down around and leaves basically a kind of a straight line on the floor. And so when you come to look at the aircraft, if you've got a straight line of oil uh, on the floor that's directly under the muffler shroud, then that typically is the crankshaft seal. In this case, it puts a bunch of oil leaking into the backside of the sheave, and so it would be in a different location. So that's kind of your hint that uh, this would be um, uh, the cause of the oil leak. Again, pretty unusual, not nearly as common as the crankshaft seal. The crankshaft seal occurs about every 500 hours in a uh, Robinson helicopter, 
and uh, so you can sort of expect that about every 500 you're going to be uh, every 500 hours you're going to be replacing the rear crankshaft seal now again when you have this thing all broken down and you've got the rear sheave off of it and the whole butt end of the helicopter taken off it's always a good idea to replace the alternator belt again because the alternator belts frequently will fail and so you spend about eight hours pulling all this stuff off fixing whatever you fixed and put it all back on only to have the alternator belt fail about 20 or 30 hours later and guess what now it takes several hours five six hours whatever to pull all of that off again just to replace the alternator belt so if you're working on the rear end of the engine and you're pulling the sheave off and or the crankshaft or your uh, i'm sorry and or the flywheel and replacing the crankshaft seal or you're replacing the cap and the end of the the um, crankshaft then you really 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 should consider replacing the uh, alternator belt and save yourself about a thousand dollars uh in uh, future bills to come so you can replace that alternator belt for about 25 30 dollars whatever it costs and not go through a thousand dollars worth of labor to pull all that off put the alternator belt and put it back on if you just do it at the same time you got the aircraft torn down anyway all right well i hope this was helpful and if you haven't already please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next video